Middle Earth enjoyed a thousand years of peace after the ring was lost, and the death of Isildur. But Sauron was not dead, only cast to the shadows. In time, evil once more began to move. Arnor, the North Kingdom of Men, ruled by the heirs of Isildur. This land of passion and promise is waylaid by men's inability to set aside petty differences. And so it was that civil strife weakened the Dunedain and broke the land into three realms. Rudor, the smallest and weakest of the Dunedain kingships. Cardolan, guardian of the ancient Barrow Downs, where the forefathers of the Dunedain lay entombed. And Arthedain, the most powerful of the northern realms, still ruled by Isildur's heirs from its capital at Fornost. It was during the reign of the eighth king of Arthedain that evil began to multiply in Angmar, a twisted, frozen land that lay north beyond the Ettenmoors and home of the Black Numenorians. Among them, a sorcerer of great power arose, known only as the Witch King. He has taken up his Iron Crown for a single purpose, to destroy the Dunedain and their kingdom of Arnor. Before Arnor can be invaded, the Witch King needs a symbol to unite Angmar's proud and willful denizens. Legends say that here in ages past loomed a great fortress of the ancient darkness, its ruins dark and silent in the mountains. Rebuilding this bastion will secure the Iron Crown's dominion over the Black Numenorians and the Northern Troll tribes. In the face of this gathering storm, King Argaleb of Arthedain reclaims the throne of all Arnor. Cardolan does not oppose him, but one faction of the Hillmen of Rodar begin to rebel. They are led by Hualdar, a hill chief in secret league with Angmar. Moving to crush this resistance, Argaleb has Hualdar seized and moves into Rudar. But Angmar, its power ready, advances into the weakest of the Dunedain realms. Thus, one man's lust for power has given the Witch King an opportunity, and he will seize it with both hands. King Argaleb is slain, his hope for a unified North Kingdom shattered with his pride in the ruins of Rudar. Waldar takes his place as a leading commander serving the Iron Crown, while his people provide more minions for the Thrall Masters. But despite their wounds, the Dunedain are not without power. The fortified Weather Hills and fortress at Amansul stand as a shield protecting Fornost and the heart of Arnor. The new king, Arvaleg, son of Argaleb, with the help of Cardolan and the elves, has checked Angmar's advance. For many years, they have held the frontier along the Weather Hills. Using the power of the Palantir of Amonsul, Arvaleg has foiled every attack and stratagem. The Witch King must now undertake a daring and dangerous strategy, a direct assault on the fortress of Amonsul. Diversionary attacks draw off the forces of Cardolan and the Elves while the main army strikes the fortress. Although not the largest bastion in Middle-earth, Amansul is host to a mighty power, the Master Palantir of the North. Amansul is laid to ruin. With its garrison reduced, the great bastion of the North could not withstand Angmar's rage. But Angmar's victory is not complete. Avaleg has escaped Amansul with a prize that the Witch King covets over all others. The fall of Amansul is a terrible blow to the will of the Dunedain. However, a brave band led by Avaleg has fled the fortress with the Palantir, heading back toward Fornost. Angered by its escape, the Witch King dispatches the Lieutenant of Khan Doom 
with orders to retrieve the stolen orb. The shards of the Palantir still contain great power. For many centuries, the Black Numenorians have dabbled in the Dark Arts. Now, these sorcerers have a focus to enhance and concentrate their power, unleashing a new terror upon Arn. The destruction of Amansul and its Palantir crippled the army of Arthurden, but Fornost still stands. The army and the people are prepared to defend the city to the bitter end. But the Witch King cannot commit his army to a siege at Fornost, with an enemy free to attack his rear. For the army of Cardolan was not at Amansul, and is still in the field. A way must be devised to make them fight on ground of the Witch King's choosing. The Witch King orders his proven lieutenants, Gwaldar and Rogash, to seize the most sacred ground in Arnor, the Barrow Downs. With the hallowed graves of their ancestors and kings at risk, Cardolan will be forced to battle. On these grounds, Angmar can bleed them white, clearing the path for final victory. Everywhere the armies of Angmar march, death and desolation follow. Cardolan has fallen, and all that remains is the realm of Arthurdain. Men have allowed this to happen. Their indecision and disunity have brought them to the brink of annihilation. Arnor sits at the edge of the Abyss. Rudar is the Witch Kings. Cardolan is reduced to scattered bands of refugees. Only Fornost stands between Angmar and total domination of the North. Or so it appeared. The attack on Rivendell has united the Elven strongholds. Now, the Elves of Linden, Rivendell, and even Lorien march against Angmar. They are intent to drive a sword into the heart of Angmar that would last an age. The Witch King's cunning matches his cruelty. The well-timed arrival of his lieutenants prevented a complete annihilation of his army. The Iron Crown has suffered a heavy blow, but Angmar has not been defeated. It will take time to recover its strength. Perhaps enough time for Arnor to rise anew. But the Witch King has no intention of allowing this to happen. The Dúnedain of Arnor believe the Elven Strike will provide them a chance to recover. Given time, Arnor can finish what the Elves had started. But they reckon without knowledge of the depth of the Witch King's hatred. He sends his sorcerers among the barrows of the great Arnor kings. While the desecration of this hallowed soil might break the hearts of men, the Witch King has an even darker purpose. To unleash a malevolent plague across the lands of men and elves. Though he fought with a valor rarely seen among men, the young Arnorian captain paid a price beyond death and now serves the Iron Crown. Angmar's great plague stretched far and wide, striking at the heart of Arnor and weakening the already fragile Dúnedain defenses. But the Witch King will not be satisfied until Arnor lay buried in the bodies and blood of its youth. Many years have passed since the Great Plague devastated the North. In great secrecy, the hosts of Angmar have been reforged, and the final stroke is ready to fall upon the last bastion of Arnor's power, Fornost. With its beautiful spires and unyielding walls, it alone stands between the Witch King and total victory. But the Dúnedain will not fall easily. They have gathered all of their host and all of their allies for this battle. The last and decisive battle for the North is about to begin. Angmar's hammer fell and down came Fornost in ash and fire. Arnor never wakes from its age-long nightmare. Thousands lay dead in the streets. The Witch King's malice can now spread throughout these northern lands. Evil had come to Arnor and evil prevailed. 
After the Witch King's bloody final triumph over Arnor, the kingdom of Gondor can look away no more, lest the Iron Crown dominate all the lands of the West. Elves and men come together to drive evil from the north forever. Arnor of Gondor would lead the men. The elves call for Glorfindel, elf lord of Rivendell and Gondolin, to lead them. And so it is, at the will of my people, that I change from storyteller to blade bearer once more. I ride, Elrond at my side, under Erner's banner. Elves and men together will drive evil from the north forever. We will not merely push the Witch King back to his lair of Khan Doom, as we had foolishly done before. We intend the total destruction of Angmar. And this time, it will be so. The trail of blood and suffering is over. Angmar is defeated. Like so many cities of Arnor, it lies in ruin, its hopes for a final conquest of the West gone. Middle-earth rejoiced. In his final stand, the Witch King sat upon his black horse before us. As we rode forward, he realized that all hope was lost. His terrifying scream of rage sent the chill of winter down our spines as he turned and fled into the shadows. Erna struck out to chase him down, but I then realized his power. We thought him but a powerful black Numenorian, but he is Nazgul, first of the nine, most fell servant of the Dark Lord Sauron. I put up my hand and called out to Erna, do not pursue him, he will not return to these lands. Far off yet is his doom, and not by the hand of man shall he fall. 